And maybe it would be nice for you to introduce yourself and your function here in Bulgaria. Actually, I am full time in academia, but I have the privilege and honor that my country asked me to be uh, the ambassador of Malta to the Republic of Bulgaria and to Romania as well. And that this is precisely the function why I am here. So I do my work, academic work, but then uh, regularly or occasionally how needs uh, arise, I will just turn up and keep on working um, to improve the relations between the country, keeping in mind the reality of today, that a lot of this work can be done at home, and home is everywhere, because through internet this is the reality. Yeah. I am here in Bulgaria to teach through Erasmus, and whilst I am teaching I do diplomatic work come over to meet to meet people, uh, address uh, and hold some interviews, give lectures. I, this week I already gave two, three public lectures. Okay. Even next week I will be okay. doing another public lecture. This is diplomacy nowadays, the way I see it. I'm not, a, as I told you, I'm not a diplomat by training. Um, it is to create bridges. It's important to foster friendship. And the foundation for friendship is trust. Yeah. And trust is something which you build continuously repeatedly by being yourself with people who are themselves. And I am a person that I believe in my country, but equally I believe in Bulgarians, I believe in Romanians. Just uh, one little question before we continue to uh, excellence. May we call each other Peter and Lino? My name is Lino. I am okay. very happy with my name. The rest? I think your name means the white Lino, is that right? Yes. Bianco. Yes. Okay, uh, can you tell me a little bit? I, I was very amazed. Malta, the first inhabitants of Malta was 5,200 years before Christ. So we have a very old history. And I saw also a lot of interesting things. You were occupied many, many, many times in the. True. I think arguing 5,200 years before Christ is actually on the on the conservative side, because when you look at megalithic architecture of Malta, which predates the pyramid by a millennium, wow. and there are huge uh, monuments, there are huge architectural feats, there are feats in architectural and structural engineering. Mm -hmm. Some of the limestones, megaliths, are about 22 tons. Wow. When you realize the organization, the skill to be able to develop such monuments, yeah. Um, it is not something which happened overnight. Mm -hmm. It is something which had to, to develop, people had to develop skills, etc. By the way, it was very much recently, in the last recent years, where studies in Italy confirmed the ingenuity of these structures. These structures, mm -hmm. besides being the one and only architectural building, if you were to look at Stonehenge, Stonehenge is they are objects, as it were, with respect to the Druids, they are objects in space. In the case of the megalithic temples in Malta, they contain space. And yeah. this was made them architecture. Yeah. But in addition to that, it's the unique way in which they built that they created a circle, a, a structurally, uh, the megaliths are a bit inclined so that the sides of the megaliths are working in compression. And like that, you get a cylindrical uh, closing top. This is the predating, the first references to corbelling to the development of the dome. And now the dome was structurally the big feat of the Roman Empire, oh. which was 2000 years ago. So uh, saying that it is a civilization which dates to that time, I think it is not not correct, because at the time we have got these pieces of architecture which are still nowadays impressive, and you need a culture to have it. Yeah. Well, not only culture, you had a good army, because Malta was the only, one of the only countries who was beating the Ottomans, you know, the Turkish. Yeah, but uh, when we're talking about the Ottoman Empire, we're talking about the last 500 years. Yeah. Uh, we're not talking millennia. At the time, uh, more, there's more reference to trade routes 
Mm-hmm. Malta is a small island in the Mediterranean. Metro- in the center of the Mediterranean. 60 kilometers, right? If I did my It own. is a very small island, but essentially it was always at the crossroads between North and South Mediterranean. So you're north to Libya, right? Yes, and um, we're not north to Libya. And very near Sicilia, right? Yes, south of Sicily. We're about 60 miles south of Sicily. So you were also a part in the in uh, the first uh, or the 10th century or the 11th century, the kingdom of Sicilia. Yes, of course. Yeah. The, the relationship with the surrounding neighbors were always there and our relationship was always one of traitors and somehow survivors. Yeah. We still made it. But with a very difficult language, I have to explain to you. Uh, somebody in the, in the bus told me, uh, look at the sign the next bus stop. And I saw a lot of QQ and WW. Where is your language from? The language, the roots are Semitic. Mm -hmm. It's actually Semitic in origin, written in Latin alphabet. Um, Some of them trace it to uh, the Phoenicians, which were very important traders, settlers in Malta as well. There are Romance words, but mainly the Maltese language because we have got a language, we have got a literature, um, which is quite, quite rich. The orthography, the language and grammar, is very much Semitic, but not only that, but even our system of counting, the way we perceive. Can you maybe, for the viewers, say um, Yes. A um, le- first numbers, which, mm-hmm. if there are people who are listening to us who are actually accustomed to Semitic language, but they're Lebanon, or North Africa, whether uh, Eastern Mediterranean or uh, Southern Mediterranean, we had name Kleta, Erba, Hamza, Sitta. This is one, two, three, four, five, well. six. And if there is somebody here who is, who is uh, familiar with Semitic uh, languages, he will realize that this may be a dialect of Arabic. Because effectively, that's what yeah. it is. So your language has some kind of a yes. connection with Arabic. Yes, and it makes very much uh, sense. Can you tell me a little bit about your country before we go in the main topic about our, our last meeting we had in Malta? Uh, about, you know, how long is Malta now independent? I think 1964 from the British. That was the last colony. Yes. And what is the main thing which is interesting for foreign for viewers, for viewers to, to see in Malta? Is it touristic? It has... Malta is an interesting country. It's an interesting country because when it comes to the natural resources, it is very poor. What makes it rich are the people. Mm -hmm. And the human resources and the way with time, I made reference to this before, we always survived. The, The issue of insularity was there. And we are essentially dealers. We dealt, we survived. Yeah. Malta nowadays, this is the same philosophy, this is the same approach. Actually, last year, Malta registered a growth of the GDP of 6% plus, which is almost legendary. Well, the approach is not the people for the economy, but the economy for the people. So, without doing any austerity measures, there is growth. It is a reality nowadays in Malta that unemployment is very low. There is no work for the lazy, Mm -hmm. but the rest, we almost import labor. This is the reality, investing in the people. Malta is a very secure place. Yeah, uh, also I noticed that Malta uh, is very open for, for Uh, people from other countries, even from non-European Union countries. It it is a place where the scope is humanity. And this element of humanity is extremely, extremely real, pragmatic. Mm -hmm. We are living in a country where if you write to the Prime Minister an email, Within 15 minutes, half an hour, he answers you. Mm-hmm. The public service will take two months, but the Prime Minister asks you within 
half an hour. This is the reality. Yep. It is a reality which addresses the people. Um, and the focus is actually people. People are not numbers. People are individuals. Um, and if you think, if you read, if you listen about what is politics, of course this is politics, but there are certain principles which in Malta it's zero tolerance. Yeah. Zero tolerance, abuse on kids. Zero tolerance, abuse on the on disabled. Zero tolerance on the elderly. Zero tolerance. In Malta at one o'clock, two o'clock, you can go out for a walk with no problem. With kids. It's a very kid-friendly place. Yeah. You can actually sit here and have the kids on the other side um, of the ground playing. It's super safe. Yeah. And effectively, this is something which makes Malta unique. Yeah. And they make you feel that you belong. In Malta, I told you, it's not a rich country, material-wise, but the richness is the people. Yeah. It's a place where there is no homelessness, there is no begging, not because people are super rich, but at the end of the day, the feel is that everybody who is born have got the right to live. Can you maybe introduce uh, uh, our trip and maybe also to go a little bit further uh, about your president? We were guests in the Royal Palace. We were felt very, very welcome and I saw a lot about your president and she's very humane. She does a lot of things. Maybe you can mention her name, uh, a little bit of her background yeah. and what is the driven power I see that she works something like 14, 15, 16 hours a day, yeah. and mostly with kids. I saw the, the palace garden, we will show the viewers uh, uh, the beautiful pictures of many kids playing, feeling welcome in a high security palace. The door was open, not only for us, but for many, many other people. Maybe you can explain a little bit the background of your president, and what is your driven power? Yeah. So let's answer, try to attempt to answer that question and then about the event. Um, I had made reference to that Malta, the element of uniqueness, the element of humanity is there. Now I'm not talking as an ambassador, I'm talking as a, as a citizen. Um, Her Excellency the President Mary Louise Colero Preca, the head of state in Malta, she has been close to the people for 40 years. We're talking a person with a strong social conscience. Before becoming the head of state, she was the minister of the family on social solidarity. And, of course, uh, when she became a minister, there was the mass to celebrate, the new cabinet, etc. And there was the car there, a very luxurious car. And the first question was, how much am I paying for this car? Well. And she refused to actually go on that car and she took a very small car to go for the event. She said, hmm. sorry, I don't accept such a car. Another incident, and this gives an insight very much into, into the personality. We are quite blessed to have such a head of state. The head of state, which is a head of state of the people, and I'm not talking here just uh, in a rhetorical manner. She's a person that literally every person counts. And sometimes she even calls some people who are in need, because what reference was made, and she will find time for them. But this incident explains it all. When she became the head of state, of course we have got the St. John Co Cathedral, you may have some views to show, which is a beautiful cathedral. It's unique, beautiful. And this is where, um, this is where the mass is held when the head of state comes into power. And she turned down going there, and she wanted the mass to be held in a home for children with special needs. And that's for people with special needs. And yes, all government, people from the diplomatic corps had to go there and they were these people with special needs who served the mass, who organized the mass. And it's incredible. As a citizen, it makes you cry. But it, it makes you feel happy. Crying in the sense of happiness 
emotional, say over here, I've got a head of state, which has got a soul, and I'm part of it. Now, about the event, that's what I wanted to tell you. We had an event, but it was not the first time. It's the second time. It's the second time a Bulgarian uh, event. Can Malta. you maybe first explain how many Bulgarians are there in, in Malta? In Malta, there are about five to 6,000 Bulgarians resident there. Okay, and We're before talking. we continue, because I hear about the Knights, the, the land of Malta, the island of Malta, what, what is the difference? Ah, the Knights were expelled from Rhodes. Okay. And they were given Malta, as it were, um, to come over to Malta. And they came in 1530. Okay. And they remained there until 1798, when they were expelled, when the island was taken over by the French, by Napoleon. Okay. They were essentially despots. But they were actually the nobility of Europe. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our culture, Renaissance and Baroque, is thanks to them. These were la creme de la creme of Europe. And they didn't go for an EU standard. They went for the best. This is, this is the legacy of the Knights. So, are there now two Maltas? The land Malta and the island of Malta? No, the island of Malta is a republic. Yeah. But then they were expelled from there. They, they left. Nowadays, um, the Order of St. John has got its own, as it were, sovereign uh, uh, group. Near the Vatican, right? Then the, which, quite close to the Vatican, yes. Yeah. By the way, the Order of St. John is essentially a religious order. Okay. It's an order of hospitaliers. It's a religious order. Okay. And the element of religion is very strong. But that is the relationship. So um, they were Malta administrators. So that is what, what, what was the relationship. Okay. So let's Sorry, continue. Okay. Excuses, Sorry, you know, for excuse me Sorry, for inter interrupting. <laughs> excuse me for interrupting this, but I was always wondering what is the difference between the land of Malta. I know now, but you probably as a viewers don't know and thank you Lino for explaining this to us. Now let's go to the event. The event. That was the second the second year running, um, it was something that uh, when I became an ambassador and uh, I worked with the people, mm -hmm. and of course I thought that there should be something which helps Balkan come together. Okay. The diaspora is very important to work together. By the way, 6,000, we're talking about 1.5% of the population. Yes. Which, is not, which is a good. Um, and it was an event which. Uh, Cyril and Metulius are two saints which are very much associated with culture and education. Mm -hmm. And I, saw, I thought that it is a very nice occasion to, do, to celebrate these two patron saints. I had spoken to the head of state um, and she hosts this event over two days at the presidential residence in Attart. Um, and it's a, 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 a celebration which addresses different part of the public. In the morning there is a lecture. Last year it was on Syrian Methodius and the Unity of Europe. This year was on Syrian Methodius in historical iconography. Then um, there was an opening of an exhibition of Bulgarian artists in Malta. Last year and even this year. And uh, a concert of Bulgarian talent with Maltese. Again, the importance is not just to have a concert, but actually communicate this Bulgarian spirit yeah, yeah. as well. For example, last year there was Ludgidia. Ludgidia is a very interesting um, piece of opera which communicates love. Giovanni sort of love, it's a very deep yeah. concept mm -hmm. uh, associated with the Blattics, which is something part of the uh, of uh, history. Yeah. And in addition to that, the day after it was over a Friday and a Saturday, on Saturday there was the Bulgarian Sunday School, this is another reference which I want to make, which had their lesson in the secret garden of the palace, where Herakson attended as well. 
And this is precisely like that, making it an event for all the community. Um, the special guest which came over both last year and this year, whom I had approached, I told them, look, there is no honoraria, there is no money. Please come, I can't, we can't pay for that. And by the way, please pay the ticket and the accommodation. And they all accept it. And this is the beauty as well of Bulgarians who want to create this bridge. Yeah. And Her Excellency the President actually said, these will be my guests. They will not pay accommodation. They come and I provide them accommodation at the presidential palace. And that's where last year and this year, um, the special guest lived with the president. And I can tell the viewers, the palace is incredible. The beds are incredible. The service is incredible. The surroundings are incredible. The people are incredible. I mean, I felt really welcome. And I smelled, I smelled history. Could you maybe explain a little bit from which date, which century which, is this palace made? No, this dates back to the 16th century. It well, was developed with time. But you're making reference to history, etc. These are places where um, the spirit of place is very strong. Yeah. It's very strong and it communicates that. Yeah. Um, and it is beautiful because, first of all, all the people there, yeah. they work as one big family, but even when it came for these events, um, literally you see the special guests being part of this team. Yeah. I remember last year there was Boyko, Boyko Zvetanov practicing about six hours a day. Incredible. You can feel the corridor still vibrating. Wow. Yeah. This year there was as well Andriana Yordanova, a Bulgarian soprano based in Malta. Um, she's actually the first person who has got a doctorate on Malta Bulgaria music relations. She teaches in Malta, she teaches at the university as well. This year there was a Vaila Mikhailov, was a colleague of Achille as well. From and Plovdiv, Plovdiv, if you remember, right? Yes, yes, from Plovdiv. And you see these corridors vibrating. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and this is precisely celebrating friendship. Yeah. And last year it was the first year, and last year was the 45th anniversary of Malta Bulgaria. Well. Establishing diplomatic relations. It was a relationship based on trust, on friendship. Yeah. And uh, both at the diplomatic level, by I mean diplomatic, formal political diplomatic level, the relationships were very supportive between our countries. But even at, an, at culture diplomacy, players, musicians, visitors, businesses, these are all yeah. cultural, this is all cultural diplomacy. Yeah. Um, has remained active. So um, can you maybe explain a little bit more from day one? I remember we didn't have any activities, but day two we had a wonderful meeting with in the uh, Bulgarian school, right? Yeah, another, another team. And where was it? Yeah, I will tell you exactly about it. When uh, I remember uh, when His Excellency Marin Rajkov, the former Prime Minister, interim Prime Minister of Bulgaria, became the ambassador of Bulgaria to Malta. Uh, on that same day, the Bulgarian community spoke to me. I remember we stayed on late. said, look, some of them have been there for about 15, 20 years. said, our dream is to have a Sunday school for our children because we want to teach them Bulgarian language. We want to teach them culture. I said, look, these people make sense what they're saying. We met, I mean, in the yeah. evenings, weekends, etc. And uh, anyway, uh, created some proposal and from the Maltese side, I have to admit um, that within, if they had been 20 years working, in 20 days I got the green light that it can take place in Malta. Um, and last, not last October, the one before, October 2015, the Bulgarian Sunday School, Cyril and Methodius, started functioning in Malta, teaching language, culture, literature, supported by the Bulgarian government. This is the second year running. Last October I talked to the game. But there were some problems. There were some financial problems, there are some financial problems. Um, basically because some people did not process some papers, something like that. Yeah, but I hear even that the teachers were yes, offering I am to work very, without very, money. Exactly. This is the beauty, Peter. Mm -hmm. This is the beauty where you, where you feel that the school will be a success because it belongs to the people. Yeah. Precisely. What sounds for me a problem or what was a problem, what is a problem, actually it is 
the biggest asset which helped the Bahrain community come together. And it's precisely this point, because all the money was going to rent these places, because effectively these are four classes. They go to private bodies or public bodies to rent. And the rent is expensive, more than the rent is expensive. Yeah. So they ended up without money. And it is so much interesting uh, that the teacher said, OK, we're ready not to be paid, but we keep on teaching, which is beautiful. But there were other aspects. There were Bulgarian artists. There was certainly a Bulgarian artist who offered her work of art to be sold so that the money will, be, will go for the school. There was the concert where there were a few hundreds attending the day before this event. Peter, I remember you there. Um, all the special guests were there. His Excellency Rykov was there. Um, the Honor Consul of Bulgaria to Malta was there, Dr. De Marco. Um, the Honorary Consul of, Bulg of Malta to Bulgaria, Borislav Boyanov, was there. And most important, if I may interrupt you, uh, a certain award was given to the president of the Bulgaria. Yes, yes. That is acknowledging the head of yeah. school. Yeah. But um, if I may put that aside to keep on the argument, besides this artist, there was Andriana Yodanova, who is one of the best talented sopranos. She's of international standing, who gave a concert, all the, all the proceedings to go for the school. Mm. Uh, there was a group, a full group, which was set up, which did contribute for this event as well. It's beautiful. And there's another detail, which was not mentioned, but I read about it, and it is on Facebook, this one, that there was a school in Bulgaria that the children collected money for the books of the Sunday School Mota, wow, really? which is beautiful. Yeah. For this year, these six months, has got the presidency, and one of my teams, which I had in mind, was to set the Bulgarian Sunday School in Mota with a Syrian Methodist school in Sofia. It actually took place. Mm -hmm. And actually, her excellency, the president, said, come to the palace and hold this year. It was in the same room where the exhibition was, was held. And it was on the 31st of March, Freedom Day, which is a Friday. That means the Sunday school in Malta could attend on Friday because kids don't have school, it's a public holiday. And the school here, it's not a public holiday, so kids were there. And her excellency, the president, before going for uh, Freedom Day activity celebrations, she actually went there, addressed both his kids, addressed the kids in Bulgaria as well. It was a beautiful event. And it ended up with something very nice. Said, look, my husband will come to your school in a few weeks. And actually, the second event, which was linked with Malta's cultural presidency program, was uh, the first gentleman traveling to Bulgaria on a team of cuisine diplomacy, which is a team of the youth of Varna to the community. And for this particular event, the first gentleman, who himself is very good in uh, in cooking, he actually won an award on one of his publications, he prepared a special menu, which is low cost, but very healthy, to address the people out there. A Maltese menu is very healthy, it was designed, it's available, and this particular menu, it's affordable by all. But part of this, uh, this program, actually, he visited the special school and had a beautiful program with them, to say thank you to them. So it is a relationship built on trust. Yeah. And this is something which one should encourage to keep on fostering. Yeah. And what seems a problem, you realize that the community is coming together. Some people may be skeptical, but this is partly doubt, but, but it is something which is transitory. What is beautiful is you see the community, you see Malta, you see Bulgaria. Malta and Bulgaria, what makes them are the respective people. And at the end of the day, we are one because we are different yeah. and this is the concept from the Balkans yeah. unity in diversity and in the event which was uh, last Saturday in the, in the secret garden where there's this activity of the Sunday school where the kids were there by the way, this year and even last year each Bulgarian kid got a Maltese friend, another classmate yeah. and it's nice seeing a young Bulgarian girl, less than 10, with her friend, Maltese friend, less than 10, singing the national anthem. 
to mm -hmm. our president. This nice. shows that we are together. We are living together. This is precisely let's encourage and strengthen our resources because together we can make it. Yeah. It is a case where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Can you maybe explain while we are watching in the back of us the, the complete program? While we are talking, I'm normally, as you know, I make a lot of videos. And we had also a lecture about uh, Cyril and Methodia, his art. Let's go to, maybe if we can go back, because we were just talking about day four, about the beautiful event which occurred in the in the Royal Garden, the Secret Garden. Uh, maybe on day three, we had two events. Uh, one was a lecture in the chapel for the Russian, Russian chapel, chapel right? For the Russian At chapel. the palace. And how did you meet the Professor Alisa Rusheva? Basically, last year the team was, it was the first event, is Syria Metodius and the Unity of Europe. And the relevance of Syria Metodius to Europe. This year, the team which I thought of is Syria Metodius in historical iconography. And the place where you can appreciate iconography in, uh, in Bulgaria is precisely the National Art Gallery, which has got an extension in the crypt of, uh, of uh, the Cathedral Alexander. Yeah, yeah. So that is the way. I went and I went to the director there. And the director happened to be Professor Alitza Ruseva. So I ended up to Professor Ruseva precisely because she's director of this incredible Okay. Impressive, priceless collection, and I wanted the best of the best. Then um, I got to know in our conversation that she's even she's even a member of the academic staff at the Institute of Art Studies at the Bulgarian Academy of Science. I said, point on. I had spoken to her. I told her, look, there is no honoraria for this thing. You have to pay the, to pay for the tickets. You have to pay for the accommodation as well. And of course, this is involves a lot of work. This is not the same of just talking, uh, coming over and giving a talk because um, she had to prepare a lecture. The lecture had to be go gone through. It will be actually part of an official publication of the Office of the President. So we're not talking about coming over and talking off the cuff. Yeah. So that is the way I ended up at Professor Ruseva. And she was kind enough to accept. Of course, as the other guests, when she came to Malta, uh, before she came to Malta, president said these will be my guests so they will yeah. be living at the palace and this is but could, I, could you could you I, maybe a little bit explain the viewers what was the lecture about the lecture was precisely Cyril and Methodius in a broad historical context its development mm -hmm. but the focus is not just on them but their disciples as well and this is part of the legacy of not just of Bulgaria, but of Europe. Because when it comes to Syria and Metodius, there are two saints, which, two scholars which are still alive. Mm -hmm. They are still alive. If you take the Euronote, their dream of having a Cyrillic alphabet, okay, their alphabet was Laconitic, yeah. and developed later, okay? Their dream 11 centuries ago, you can see it there. Yeah. Today, I was at a uh, business breakfast with uh, the minister responsible, Mr. Pavlova, responsible for the presidency, Bulgarian presidency, and I saw the logo. And it's very interesting, the logo, because the logo, it's actually BG, BG in um, Latin alphabet and BG in Cyrillic alphabet. And that, that shows the beauty, the beauty that even in such an event, the soul is still alive. Yeah. So this is something which is, this is the refined smartness, you know. And Syria and Atodius, besides uh, their vision, we talk about Europe. They were talking about the unity of the people. This was a message of toleration. Let's improve, let's have an alphabet so that we can have a language, we can communicate. And nowadays, there is almost a third of a billion people who talk, who write this language. Yeah. So, that is precisely... Okay. Uh, 
while we were talking, we're going to see now a little bit about the presentation of, uh, of uh, Professor PhD and the Associate Professor, I have to say, and the uh, Professor Rusheva and in the Russian chapel. The images of Slavic in letters in are not exceptional. The tomb of San Siro, the philosopher, is in Rome in, ba in the Basilica of San Clemente. In San Siro's hagiography, it is said that an icon with his image was placed on his tomb in the San Clemente church. This was probably his first image, but it did not reach us. The respect of San Siro and Methodius in Rome, as well as their images there, are mainly related to their role in the translation of the relics of the Pope St. Clement. Okay, as we saw a little part of this beautiful presentation about the icons and where they can be found, which century they were first painted, uh, at the evening we had a beautiful concert, an incredible concert I may say, with beautiful a uh, piano player and three incredible singers. Could you maybe explain a little bit, how did you find it? You didn't went to Idols or the Voice of Malta or no, the no, Voice no. of Bulgaria? No, no. There, is, there is a rationale. Everything has been decided and taught. Yeah. And this is something which is building on our forefathers. We stand high on other people's shoulders. because he is the heir, as it were, of yeah. the legendary Boris Ristov. Yeah, Boris right. Ristov was the first great voice who came over yeah. to Malta. He's legendary. Um, then there is Andriana Rodanova, who was a student and the first PhD on Malta, mm -hmm. Malta uh, Bagay Music Relations, and she has been a student of the National Academy of Music in Sofia. And there was the pianist, the accompanist, the pianist was actually actually was the head of the Department of Music, who was a student of Blagovesta Karla Vatlova, who in the 80s used to come to Malta to teach music. Oh. And he still has got links with Bulgaria. So this year, I said, look, this year I am going to get st a student of Adriana Rodanova. There is another colleague of Adriana Rodanova who is Maltese, who studied under Blagovesta Karla Vatlova, studied in the National Academy, and these two ladies, which teach at the, uh, at which teach at the um, School of Music, Johannes Strauss School of Music in Malta, I said, I will take two of their students. So that's where the soprano and mezzo soprano comes in. And then, to help increase this fost fostering this element of friendship, I said, I will get a colleague of Andriana and Miriam Kauki, who is the tenor of Plotif. And that's where you create the continuity. So we have got an established tenor, Ivalo Mihailov, with two students of two of his friends.
with the incredible voices you will hear now. Which academy, most of them, all that or had, uh, were rooted, uh, anchored, where um, Carlo Batlova used to teach, and if I'm not mistaken, she still teaches. She's in her 80s. You know? So this is the scope of creating this link. There is another thing that uh, Blokovista Carlo Batlova in Malta was supported by some people who were supporters, patrons of the arts, include people like Lino Attard, Barrett Lino Attard, Emishi Kruna, etc. They are still alive. Um, but, for example, Lino Attard was the baritone who was teaching the mezzo soprano Christine Dalli, whom he had put in touch with Adriana Rodanova. So, like this, I will rope in, and actually there is a bit of a write-up at the end of the concert, precisely to get in these people who are put aside in history. Yeah. But they are the foundation stuff. They are part of this legacy. So the element is, let's celebrate this legacy, which has got now 46 years of friendship, solid friendship. So the scope is not just saying, okay, we'll go for, for, for a tenor. No, the scope is to actually tickle the Maltese soul, tickle the Bulgarian soul, and together we'll make something which is timeless. Okay, thank you for that. Before we continue to the final uh, part of our conversation with uh, Mr. Lino Bianco, the ambassador for the Republic of Malta uh, in Bulgaria, uh, we always say uh, don't uh, talk about food, but taste the food, don't talk about the music, let's hear the music and let's go to some inserts of that wonderful concert at that last evening at the Royal Palace. And before we, we say the final goodbye, you can uh, now watch a little bit about the other side of Malta, the beautiful sites. If you're interested to Malta, there are direct flights from Sofia, from many countries. You'll be very welcome and very pleased I was. And you will be very pleased uh, to see all these videos I made about the beautiful beaches, about the public transport, about the restaurants, about the real Malta and the beautiful people of Malta. Thank you very much, uh, Lino. And hope to see you very soon again. So do Thank I. you. Thank you.
Thank you.